So I'm joined now in Mission Control Houston by somebody who's pretty familiar with uh, what this spacewalk is going to entail, NASA astronaut Doug Wheelock. Doug, thanks so much for joining me. And you've done this before. You've done almost this exact same spacewalk uh, back in 2010. Yeah, absolutely. It's a little bit different failure that we're experiencing uh, this time around, but mm -hmm. um, the spacewalks to remove this old pump module and replace it with a new spare is exactly the same as what we did in 2010. So uh, we we had a lot of lessons learned back then, and so we've implemented those changes into our procedures and in the, in the way that we prepare our suits and, uh, and our tools, and so we'll be ready to go on Saturday. And so obviously a lot of similarities in it, so it really is identical. Are there any differences? Uh, well, the difference is now we, we learned it was sort of difficult to uh, disconnect these ammonia connectors back mm -hmm. in 2010. The pressure, we were running pretty high at operational pressures, 360 PSI. And so I had a difficult time uh, disconnecting these connectors. And we learned in the l latter uh, two uh, spacewalks during that time frame that if we lowered that pressure, it would certainly help us uh, in uh, disconnecting and reconnecting those ammonia lines. So we learned that, and we've, we've kind of done some simulation, and we've, uh, we're going to drop the pressure so to kind of give these guys a little bit of a head start when they get outside. So, so some lessons learned already. So this is, some, this is a spacewalk that wasn't planned. This is an unplanned spacewalk. So I imagine there's got to be a lot of stuff to do on orbit just to get ready. I mean, what have the crews been doing over the last couple of days to try and prepare, prepare Yeah, that's right. It's, it's a, we refer to it as a contingency spacewalk. And mm -hmm. so um, the, the skills really, though, are fundamental. And we practice all of these skills, uh, just rehearse them over and over again in the pool. And the crew has done these particular skills. And so the, the skills are the same. Uh, but uh, space always has surprises for us, especially when we go outside. A lot of this mechanical uh, hardware that's operating outside um, is bombarded with all kinds of little micrometeor, uh, uh, little uh, tiny flecks, and also um, the radiation outside and the temperature swings mm -hmm. that we have in day and night passes. Uh, this, these mechanical devices don't operate like they do here on Earth or underwater in the pool. And so we try to simulate uh, those uh, malfunctions and prepare the crew uh, to, to face those should they occur when they get outside. And we actually have some video from your last spacewalk. Maybe you can walk us through a couple oh, of the, uh, the procedures. And sure. I'm pretty sure there's a good example of yeah, you see here, into something you don't expect. Uh, the robotic arm is moving into place, and you can see, you'll probably see some what looks like snowflakes in some of these views, and that's ammonia that's kind of leaking out of this system. And you'll see that there are three large connectors and one small connector that they're going to have to disconnect and then reconnect to the new pump module. And here I had to kind of do, I have a makeshift hammer to try mm -hmm. to break the ice off of this. Uh, connector, the ammonia uh, formed ice inside that cavity. There you can see a little bit of snow flurries there. And uh, there you can see the ammonia leaking out of the connector as well. Um, we think that we've got a sol good solution to this now uh, where we can uh, lower that pressure and uh, give us a little bit of a better chance of uh, success on the first run. Uh, disconnecting these connectors. This pump module is really a big piece of hardware. It's uh, it weighs about 800 pounds, and oh, wow. um, and uh, although things everything is weightless in space, it, it still has mass, and F still equals ma <laughs> in space, and so and so when you're moving this big uh, kind of double door refrigerator size piece of hardware around it and it's the mass distribution in the thing is not symmetric and so so it's got some interesting handling qualities that we also simulate in our virtual reality lab here in Houston you can see uh, me on the arm there hoisting that big um, uh, pump module out of the uh, out of its uh, place there on the truss and then uh, Tracy and I went out to, to uh, to get the new pump module, and we have three spares on board currently, so we're going to use one of those uh, with these coming up EVAs. That'll leave us with two spares, but the crew will will also go and get a spare off of one of the outside, it's kind of like a porch area where mm -hmm. we keep a lot of these spare parts, and they'll return that pump module. Here's a good view of us ins inserting the new pump module back in 2010 um, into the, its slot, and then you bolt it down. It's got four bolts that hold it in place, and it's also got these four ammonia connectors and also six, uh, five um, electrical power uh, cables that connect to it to run it from inside. And then 
um, it, it, you saw that we were coming, that last scene, we were coming mm -hmm. back into the airlock. And, and part of what we have to do, we have to be ready for, is to, um, if we get ammonia on these suits, we mm -hmm. really need, we do what we call is, is a bake out. And so we, we try to stay into the sun for, for a period of time. And uh, we have uh, smart people on the ground that kind of calculate um, how much ammonia came mm -hmm. out, how much could have contacted the suits, and how long we should stay in sunlight to, uh, to let that sublimate to, to space so we don't bring drops of that ammonia inside of the space station. Yeah, it probably would make for a good atmosphere, a bunch <laughs> of ammonia floating around. Yeah, it would not be a good day if we brought ammonia inside. So we, But we do have precautions for that, and, mm -hmm. um, and the crew inside is going to be working very hard as well to get these guys back inside when they're done with their spacewalks. And they are an integral part of, um, of the cleanup and also the bake out and, um, and preparation of the station for when these suits come back inside uh, so we're ready for any contingency. And so you're kind of one of the resident experts on this, having done it before. So, what, and you're going to be pretty closely involved in these upcoming spacewalks as well. What's your role going to be here in Mission yeah, Control? Yeah, we, we've had a, a, just teams of people working here at uh, Johnson Space Center to get uh, the crew ready and get the vehicle ready and, and the suits ready as well. And so uh, for all three of these spacewalks on the Capcom console, which is the capsule communicator uh, console here in Mission Control, just sits just to the right of the flight director who is in charge of the uh, of the control room at the time mm -hmm. so i'll be sitting on um, i'll be sitting right seat at the capcom console which we call ground iv so i'll be talking to the crew while they're outside so kind of walking through their timeline i'll have their timeline in front of me they don't they probably will have parts of it memorized mm -hmm. and uh, lots of it practiced inside uh, with body control and stuff inside of the station before they go out. And we also have uh, mock-ups of the fluid connectors inside the space station so they can practice moving these bales and operating these connectors. So I'll be sitting um, and talking to the crew and hopefully uh, uh, we'll have a smooth day on Saturday as we disconnect these lines from the old pump and uh, we'll, we'll walk them through their timeline. Did you get a chance to teach him that hammer technique at all? <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we've had a couple of video conferences, well, several video conferences with the crew, and so um, I, I kind of gave them some tips on how to position their body. Mm -hmm. Part part of um, probably the, the greatest nuance uh, when you're outside working especially is to get things in a comfortable work area because the suit is kind of bulky and it's pressurized and so it, uh, it, it, it'll work against you and when you get in a wrestling match with your suit, the suit's going to win. <laughs> so, so during our training, we, we learn to work with the suit and have the suit work for us and so we, we try to get the crews to get their work site in a good work, in, work envelope and then uh, also uh, to position themselves to counteract uh, forces and torque and things like that. So. Okay. Well, again, NASA astronaut Doug Wheelock, he's done this spacewalk before, and he'll be helping them out as they ki uh, kick it off on Saturday. Doug, thanks so much for joining me, Thank giving you, us a look inside. I really appreciate it. Thank you.